got to worship him. I don't know about you, but God's been so good to me. I can't help but to worship him. He alone is worthy of all of the praise. Hallelujah. As we sing this little song, listen. He, you made the way. When my back was against the wall, and it looked like it was over.
you only deserve with your eyes and see punishment of the wicked. Amen. Amen.
worship the Lord with us because he alone is worthy of all the praise. All right, we're going to go way back. Dang, we used to do, I remember my mother and they used to do this. They used to say, real, real, Jesus is real to me. Come on, let's say,
scriptures on our church and it's still there today except the Lord builds the house so what I was thinking when I was studying it's like sometimes we try to build it we want to help God out <clears throat> like I know you got the master plan but I'm just gonna help a brother out and as women that's that's our that's what we do and in fact that's what we were created for was a help you know when we were put in the garden it was a, a distinct description of what we were supposed to do and that was to help Brother Adam. But sometimes Brother Adam don't want no help. Hallelujah. <laughs> but as a woman with an assignment, what we gotta do? We gotta help anyway. Sometimes when we help it's accepted, sometimes it's rejected. But still do your job. But as women I wanna tell us to ask God how to do the job so that the job will be effective. 
Not just doing it, so here it is, take it or leave it, this is what it is. We want to be effective helpers, if that makes sense. We want to be effective. Amen. Today's topic, topic is anchored in the Lord. Thank you, Lord. The subtopic is do not become shipwrecked at this last hour. My Lord. Do not become shipwrecked at this last hour. And I have a sub, sub, sub. Subtopic. It's personal. The sub, 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 sub topic is that it's personal. I can't make it for you, and you can't make it for me. I can't anchor for you. I'm not talking about the anchors. We use anchors for everything. You know, we want to make a child proof um, dresser. They say anchor to the wall. If you don't want stuff to fall, you want it to be anchored. You want it to be solid. You want to be stuck somewhere. I'm not talking about that type of anchor. I'm talking about an anchor that's about your soul. Thank you, Lord. Our souls are in a, in a situation right now to where if we don't anchor in, if we don't tap back in, we're going to be lost. Mm -hmm. And why would you want to live your whole life, your whole life, serving God and then turn around and be lost? Oh, yeah. This COVID, I hate to give COVID press, but the COVID is the COVID is. You know, I hate to give it press because I believe it's a trick of the devil. Mm -hmm. I believe it's a trick of the devil to get us off course. Mm -hmm. The main place that's been affected by this COVID, in my opinion, it's just my opinion, is the churches and the school. Mm -hmm. Our babies, which is our future, uh -huh. have been more affected than a lot of us. Our elderly are affected. Yes, they are. Other people are affected because we're connected to everyone is connected. Mm -hmm. But what I was, what I have a little thing with, and the Lord is helping me. The Lord is helping me. I have this little thing. This is my thing. It don't have to be your thing. Everybody got their own thing. This is my thing. You get your thing. I got my thing. But my thing is that where there's power in the powerhouse. Why is the powerhouse so afraid? More afraid than the stadiums. How come we've been singing all these songs and reading all these scriptures and Hikamashaya for a long, long time, uh -huh. and the football stadiums have taken the people, they can't come to church, uh -huh. but the stadiums are full. My God. Yeah. That's it. We can't come to church, but the restaurants are full. Yeah. That's it. The malls are full. Yeah. They say... When you go to the restaurant, just, you know, you can wear your mask in while you're sitting around waiting in the lobby. Keep going. Well, what happens when you sit down at the table? Does COVID play hide and seek when the food come out? You know why I think it's a, it's a trick of the devil? Because he's rocking us to sleep. Before COVID happened, we were shut down. When COVID happened, we got shut down. When we got back open, the only people that didn't want to come to church was the saints. Uh -huh. <laughs> now, ain't that something? Uh -huh. Ain't that something? The most fearful people were the saints. Ain't nobody going to say nothing. Amen. 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 Ain't nobody going to say nothing, right? It's true. We scared except when it's time to go eat. Uh -huh. We scared except when it's time to go to the mall. We scared except when it's time to go do a social event. We scared except when it's time when I need my nails done. Now, how many of y'all know going to the nail shop? That's the most non socially distanced place in the world. Like, I'm like, here, just hit that head. Hit that foot right there. Hit that foot. Well, I'm saying this, and it's just my opinion. I respect the fact that there's a pandemic going on. I respect the fact that people have been sick. And I respect the fact that the, only the God of our creation can heal us. That's right. It doesn't matter the disease. It doesn't matter what comes upon us. It's going to take the same God to heal us as it has been in years past. Amen. I want you, the reason why I'm saying anchor is because we don't want to use the pandemic and other things as an excuse to get further and further away from God. We're getting further and further away, and the coming of the Lord is sooner and sooner oh, yes. and sooner. Amen. Any moment, mm -hmm. he could crack the sky, and we out there worried about this. Thank you, Lord. Worried about whether, I, hey, girl, give me a hug. You give me a hug. 
give me a hug, you give me a hug, and you get to see your brother and sister act like you. Mm. <laughs> That's exactly what they do. <laughs> what I don't want to do is make something seem real when it's not. Uh -huh. And I won't, don't want to make something not real when it's real. The anchor of the soul is going to depend on you. The Bible says that we are called. Many are called, but few are chosen. You could not choose God. He chose you. Once he chose you, it's up to us to decide whether we're going to commit to the choice that he made. He called us to a high calling, and it's up to us to anchor in. Hebrews 6, chapter 6, verse 17 through 19. Because God wanted to make the unchanging nature of his purpose very clear to the heirs of what was promised, he confirmed it by an oath. God did this so that by two unchangeable things, in which it is impossible for God to lie. We who have fled to take hold of the hope offered to us may be greatly encouraged. This is where I'm at. We have this hope as an anchor for the soul. Firm and secure, it enters the inner sanctuary behind the curtain. The anchor of the soul is the most important anchor that we can tap into. Jeremiah 29 and 11, 11 says, I know the plans that I have for you. I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. Jesus is the author. He knows the plan. We don't know the plan. The plan is to get us to our expected end. The details of the plan, we do not know. That's right. The details of our lives, what's going to come in, what's going to go out, we don't know. We don't. But if your soul has been anchored, it doesn't matter the details of the plan. Mm -hmm. The key is to get your soul anchored. Yes. How can I get my soul anchored? Mm -hmm. How can I be anchored in the Lord, not in man, not in money, not in people, not in places, not in things, but in the Lord. Right. My soul must, because sometimes you're going to look for people and the people won't be there. That's right. Sometimes you're going to look for friends and the friends won't be there. Why do you think that? I believe that the reason why the friends or the people or your, what they call your circle or those people, sometimes you can't find them. Why? Because I believe God wants some time with you alone. If you don't have those crutches, if you don't have that girl say, Dad boy, get it, you did good. You, if you ain't, if you ain't do, getting all that, what you gonna do now? Well, if you, if you build a house and you're expecting it to be full and it doesn't become full, what do you do? Do you abandon the house? No. You don't abandon the house. When it comes down to the things of God, we have to anchor in and realize when the rubber meets the road and there will be some rubber and there will be some road. There will be some times in our life where we won't find nobody but God. Nobody. But guess what? God is more than enough. Yes. Yes. Somebody said God is more than enough. The author and the finisher of our faith is more yeah. than enough. As him being the author, we don't get to write anything in the book. We just get to read the book. That's right. He's the author. He's the finisher. He's the one who set the course of our lives. And if we are very wise, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. There's some rocks out there. Mm -hmm. And there's some sand out there. Uh -huh. There's some rocks. But there is a rock. Amen. Don't build yeah. your house yeah. on the yeah. rocks. Yeah. The rocks going to move. Uh -huh. They're going to shake. They're going to love you one day and then they're going to move the other day. They're going to tell you this one day. I'm going to 
get into myself. Hell, you go back home. Nobody called you. Nobody called you to the sanctuary. So come back. Come back. Come back. There's some rocks and there's some shifting. There's some sand and there's some shifting. But there is only one solid rock. Come on down. And that rock is Jesus. If you build your house upon sand, it's coming down. Yeah. Because on the rocks, when you don't do what they want to do, they moving. That's right. When you don't say what they want to say, they moving. Yeah. They're like, I was with your friend, but I ain't your friend no more. Mm -hmm. Well. And it's common to everyone. Yeah. You can say one yeah. wrong yeah. word. One you can hit as 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 Talented as my brother is on that keyboard, boy, you was working at that. <laughs> That's some old sanctified country bucket all the way in playing. That's some skillful playing. I love it. I can. I, I, my husband was saying he can tell the difference in the keyboard sound. I can't really tell, but today I can tell. All right. I can tell. I, I, I can identify what he was talking about because that took me back when I was being raised. That those keys were tickling. Uh -huh. It was tickling. I said that to say sometimes if some if he tickle the wrong key and somebody tickle the wrong, they'll kick you off for one for one little small thing. Yeah, yeah. One little small thing. It doesn't matter how big or how small. But if you get your soul anchor, it's not gonna matter one way or the other. Because when the rubber meets the road, the rubber and the road meet, you're gonna have to have an anchor. Yeah. And you're going to have it for your soul. And you need it in the midnight hour. Yeah. The Sunday school lesson was talking about Jacob. How he wrestled. He wrestled all night long. How he was discouraged. How he had wept. How he had thorns. Had he had anxiety. The lesson talks about all the things that could have went on in that night on wrestling. Trying to figure out how to do this. What to say. How to say. How to move. What to wear. What to call me. Call me this. Call me that. Don't call me this. Come on now. He said, if I let go, yes, sir. I'm going to die. Yes. I'm going to die. But if I hold on, I'm, I'm going to live. Yeah. Are you in it to die or are you in it to live? Yeah. Some of us have gotten too far away. Uh -huh. Yes, the, 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 top, the, the text that I'm coming from is talking about the storm. Uh -huh. There was a storm and Paul was saying, he said, I told y'all not to even go this way. But because you went this way, the storm is coming. At first, it was a small storm. But then the winds really got to blowing. Mm -hmm. And it really got to blowing. And I'm coming from Acts chapter 27, verse 13 through 26. And then I'm going from the sh where the shipwreck happened. In Acts chapter 27. The storm, sometimes there's going to be storms where that's just a little bit of a little bit of wave. It ain't that big of a deal. It'll pass. Mm -hmm. It'll pass. But there's going to be some times where stuff's going to happen so traumatic in your life. That you're going to really know you in a storm. On, when Jacob right. was in that wrestling match, he knew he was in a fight. Mm -hmm. And you're going to have times as women, as men, that we're going to be in a fight. But if your anchor holds, mm -hmm. you're going to be okay. When this this situation happened in Acts, that's going to go to it. It's Acts chapter 27, verse 13. When a gentle south wind began to blow... They saw their opportunity, so they weighed the anchor and sailed along the shore. Paul, later on in the scripture, he told me, I told y'all not to go this way. Sometimes when we go different ways that we're, we're, we've told, we were told not to go, there's going to be some consequences. And there's going to be some situations that we could have avoided. But now, now that we're here, now that we're here, we, we're here. We were disobedient, but we're here now. What are we going to do about this? What, in this in this text, it talks about how they went on for days and the winds was tossed and it was moved. And they started throwing stuff off the ship. They started just tossing stuff out because it's too heavy in here. They're just trying, and so what, it brought me back to the scripture that, you know, it's some, some times in your life where you are too heavy. Mm -hmm. You are carrying too much. So you won't have to cast off some of that stuff. The Bible tells us to lay aside every weight yes, and yes. every sin that so easily besets us. So what? So that we can run this race. We've gotten too heavy. Yeah. In this last few years, the people that I see you too heavy. Uh -huh. We're carrying everything. We're carrying, we're trying to carry pastor's legacy. Pastor has a legacy. Yes. Yes, he left us a legacy, uh -huh. but pastor is gone. Yes, right. Now it's time for you to pick up that torch and can make your own legacy. Yeah. Pastor was not a, a God. He, he was not a God. He was a great.
great man. Yeah. And he did great things. Yeah. And he gave us the word. And not only that, he lived by the word. Yeah. Right. What you going to do now? What are we going to do now? Pastor is gone. Yeah. Peace apostolic is never going to be the same as it was all those 30 years or longer that we were there. Yeah. It was, the one thing that make you know that it's not going to be the same because most of y'all ain't going to be there. All right. So it won't be the same. We're going to pray for our churches that we that are going through, but you got to move. Come on down. You're going to have to get off that couch. Uh -huh. You're going to have to get off that phone. Yeah. You're going to have to get off that book face, and you need to get back into the sanctuary. You need to get back into the sanctuary. The Bible tells us to gather, and you said no. The Bible says gather. As you see the day approaching, he said gather more, not less. This is part of the storm. Paul had a storm. We got a storm too. We got prayer lines that all the thing you're doing is listening to everybody else's problem. You're sneaking on the prayer line and people don't even know you're there. You're only listening in. You're not even part of the prayer. The Bible tells us when we, we I believe in prayer lines. I believe in us praying for each other. But I also believe go in your secret closet when nobody ain't looking and talk to your God. Right. You gonna this anchor thing that I'm talking about, and I'm trying to this this thing has been bothering me. The most part that's bothering me is the people that I love that are nowhere. The people that I've served with are nowhere. They're going nowhere. For the ones that are going somewhere, God bless you. God bless you that you can get your soul fed and you can finish this journey. Yeah. But for the people that are going no more, fear yeah, has Lord. tormented. Yeah. You torment it yeah. in your house. Yeah. You torment it in your bed. Yeah. You got the let the devil cripple you to the point where you can't even move. That's not God's way. That is a trick of the adversary. Yeah. If he doesn't want you to have COVID, you won't have COVID. If you, he wants you to have COVID, you will have COVID. He will heal you of all of your diseases. Right. And if he take you out with yeah, that yeah. disease, it was already prescripted because he is the author. He is the finisher. Yes, God. We're using this time. And we're using this opportunity instead of drawing closer to God. We're drawing further away. You yeah. wasn't reading your Bible when you was coming to church. God, help us, Lord. A lot of Bibles. I worked at Peace of Apostolic as a, a servant in that church for years. And before that, I was served in another church. I found more Bibles left in that pews than they have on the shelf at the store. Oh, so we know you're not reading because you never even required about it. It was hard to get you to open it when you got to church. Now that you're not at church, you're not even opening your word. Yeah. It's a trick of the adversary. Yes, it is. It's time to get your anchored soul back in the place that you know it's supposed to be. Yeah. And for some parents, shame on you. I'm not a parent, but I'm going to say it. Some parents, shame on you. Shame, shame, shame. Shame on you. The reason why I'm saying shame, your mother gave you the foundation of the word. Absolutely. Your grandparents gave you the foundation of the word. They took you to Sunday school so you could learn the oracles yes, of God. Yes, now all of a sudden you grown now. You fully grown. I'm not gonna make my kids go to church. They have options. They have options. I'm not going to put that up on them. That was too hard on If they hadn't took you to Sunday school, you wouldn't even know Jesus well. Come on now. If they hadn't put that in you as a child, when your real life got started, you wouldn't even have nothing to go to. Right. Why do you think it was so good for you to have something to go to and you don't have, you won't give that to your kids? Mm. The world is not playing yes. with your kids. Come on, Come on. Just because your kids are cute, just because they have cute hair, just because you think they're the cutest thing in the world, your kids gonna need Jesus. Come on now. And the way that they're gonna get yeah. yeah. is that you take them to church. Yes. You need to get somewhere. And some say, well, I'm gonna read at home. No, you're not. Uh -huh. No, you not. Uh -huh. <laughs> you 
too tired. Mm -hmm. It's so true. Yeah. You have too much anxiety. Mm -hmm. The man ain't acting right, the kids ain't acting right, the dog is tripping. It's too much. Wow. The, play, the church was set up, it was established so that we could have a place where we could come together and worship the one and true Hallelujah. and living God. So that on that Sunday, and when church time come, we lay aside everything, that all of our agenda, so we can hear from God. So I can see you, you can see me, and we can worship God together. Yeah. It was established for a reason. Why would we let some, they, the, it's not the government now, what's the excuse? Uh -huh. I said that when we opened back up, I said the main people that won't want to come to church would be the saints. Mm -hmm. You know why? And, and I, I believe there's some reasons why. Because people have been hurt in church. Mm -hmm. And I'm not going to just act like that didn't happen. It happened. Mm -hmm. And a lot of it happened just the way they say, my truth, your truth, the truth. I don't know what all that stuff is about. <laughs> my truth, your truth. It's, on, it's the truth or it's not the truth. It ain't your truth, it's not right. her truth. It's the truth or not the truth. The truth is we've done some damage. To people in the church. And the truth is, hmm, we're still doing it. Well. The church is a place where the one of the reasons why we chose where love abides. It's not a heart for Valentine's Day, it's not a piece of chocolate that we're talking about. Come on. Come on. God is love. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. A place where God dwells. Yes. If God does not dwell there, you don't need to be there. Well. He is a spirit and he's everywhere present. But every time you come together, you want to make God the center point. You want him to be the focus of our worship. It's not about clothes. It's not about whether I have a pair of stockings on or not. It's not about if I call you madam or bishop or elder or doctor, elder, madam, bishop, whatever you want to call it. It's not about whether I call the right title. It's about if Jesus is there. Is yeah. God there? And you know how he's going to know he's there? How am I going to know that you are my disciples? How do I know? How do I know? I hear what you say, but how can I know? Uh -huh. The way that I know that you are mine is by the love you share from one to another. Uh -huh. so when she hurting, something in my spirit is supposed to have something going on yeah. inside of me yeah. because our yeah. spirits yeah. connect. Yeah. Yeah. I'm talking about anchor. When you have, when you're anchored in the Lord, you have some tools that you need to work with. Come on now. If you don't use your tools. That's up to you. Uh -huh. But you will not finish this race in victory if you don't use the tools that your grandma gave you. Come on, man. Your grandma told you, you every man that's going to see God, they're going to be born again of the water and of the spirit. Yes. It ain't no discussion and it ain't no debate. It's the word. Yes. If you want to see Jesus, you must be born again. Again, oh, yes. you must be born of water, yes. Yes. you yes. must be born of the Spirit, yes. and you will speak in tongues as the Spirit of God gives you utterance. Yes. That's how you come into the kingdom. Right. It's no sense in trying to get anchored and you ain't got the right tools. Well, yes. Parents, when your kids get in jail, okay, <laughs> when they're in prison, because they're not following the oracles that the state has mandated that we're supposed to do, they're breaking the law. Mm -hmm. The church will be there for you. That's right. If they're sick, the church is going to be there for you. That's right. Before that happens, please give them a foundation. Thank you, Lord. Come on now. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. Please give them something. I you. Thank you, Lord. Give them something that they can go to. Yes. Other than you. If my sister hadn't taken us to church and we had not learned of God, I could not have made it. Mm -hmm. Come on now. I would not have known that in this season of my life that I need to be anchored. Come on. And I need to be anchored again. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I need to reassess the situation. Thank you, Lord. I need to pull out them scriptures that was given to me. Yeah. I need to dust that Bible off and open it up Come on, and read it and meditate it 
take on it day and night. Wow. We're behind the eight ball because the time that the church has been closed, we have not been reading those scriptures. We have not been praying like we should. So we are behind. Wow. But the one thing about this word, this word right here, it will never lose its power. Thank God. It will never change. It will never not fulfill the promises that have been given to us by the Lord. Hallelujah. So if you want to tap back in, Hallelujah. if you want to become anchored, it's available to you Hallelujah. even if we messed up. Yeah. Even if we haven't done what we're supposed to do. Even if we've charged God. Hallelujah. Even if we have not forgiven ourselves or someone else. The word is still available. Yes, yes, you got yes, any yes, takers? Yes, yes. You can come to Jesus. Yes. Not to me. I might not understand. I might not be sympathetic. But Jesus knows all. Oh, yes. Thank you, Lord. He knows from the beginning. He knows from, to the end. What's going to be your story? Uh -huh. In Acts chapter 27 verse 18. It says. We took a violent battering from the storm that next day that it began, we began to throw the cargo overboard. When you're beaten up enough by this world and everything that has happened, when sickness hits our bodies and things go awry, all the stuff that we've accumulated is not going to matter. Mm -hmm. Whether you have ten purses or two purses or no purses or five pairs of shoes or ten, it's not going to matter. Mm -hmm. The things that were taught to us in the ministries, and not just one, not just Peace Apostolic, not just Emmanuel Temple, not just whatever church you affiliated with, all together the things that they've taught us when they were teaching from the Word, it's real. Yes. It's the truth. Yes, it is. We don't have to doubt it. We don't have to kind of weigh it out. I don't know if I heard the song, song the other day. I, I wanted to pray. I did pray for the boy. I've I heard it a few times. I just had to listen to it again. It says, um, uh, what does it say? It says, try Jesus, don't try me. Because I fight. And I lay hands. And I said, he, he said, try Jesus. And I heard the same, but I never heard the song. And so I said, try Jesus, don't try me. Because I lay hands. And it went on to say that it's one part of the Bible that he doesn't believe. He doesn't believe it, but he said that part, he don't, he, he tried Jesus, but don't try me. And I began to pray, pray for the individual because, hmm, 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 that's deep. My Lord. That's deep. Because I tried Jesus, uh -huh. and I found him. To be a friend. I tried Jesus in my darkest hour and I found out that he'll come through for me. The morning will come because I've tried Jesus. Those admonitions that they've given us is for us to take and put as part of us. And not just to put as part of us, but to share it. Give it to your neighbor. Instead of giving them a piece of your mind, Give them some word. All right. Give them a born again experience. All right. All right. Give them what the thing that's carried you from this point to that point. I invited my neighbor. She said, well, she said, I got one question. <laughs> she said, I got one question. She said, do y'all still speak in them tongues? I said, well, yes. <laughs> Am I going to say no? She said, well, well, whether she come or don't come, we still gonna speak in tongues as the Spirit of God gives us up because that is what our foundation. This is what He's telling us to do, and this is to build me up. Thank you, you think I'm gonna let somebody take something away from me that's gonna build me up? The Scripture talk about how they threw things off. I can't tell you what's in your life that you need to throw off. You gonna have to throw a. a Make a decision for yourself. Uh -huh. I admonish you to go in your own house. Uh -huh. So that you won't be mad at the preacher that are telling you that you need to stop that lying. Uh -huh. And you need to stop that cheating. Uh -huh. And they ain't got but one wife uh -huh. that sure wish. Uh -huh. I don't care if she's the first. I don't know who the second lady is. If it's the first, it's the second. <laughs> if she ain't your wife, she ain't your. Uh -oh. <laughs> so you everybody got. I'm just saying, just making some examples of things that you might want to clean out. 
that you, you just might. That's just a suggestion. That you might want to, if you want to please the Lord, if you really want to get angered again, you might want to stop sleeping with people that's not your wife. Woo! Hallelujah. You might want to stop stealing the Lord's tithe. And all. Just because you're not in a building don't mean that you're not supposed to do the word of the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm not ask, I'm not a preacher. I'm just a teacher, a person that knows the word of God and lives the word of God and do everything I can do to please God. I'm speaking so good today, I'm gonna give myself an offer. <laughs> you feel me? You feel me? I'm gonna give myself an offer today because I'm delivering my soul. On, I want the people that has been in oh, church yes, oh, yes. to get back to church. I want the people that's not in church to get in church. Yeah. I want the people that's in church to do right while you in there. Oh, yeah. people 
into the house of the Lord, you're supposed to represent yes. women, yes. men. Yeah. When we come into this sovereign place, we are supposed to represent Christ. Amen. It don't have to be a five hundred dollar dress. It don't have to be a two dollar dress. Mm -hmm. As long as it represents Christ, on, we didn't come to see you. All yeah. right. I'm trying to get myself together. I'm trying to deliver my soul because I know that the devil is rocking us to sleep. Yeah. He's trying to make our God a casual God. There's nothing casual about our God. He is high and he is lifted up and his strength is the temple. Don't be slipped on Mickey. Some of the things they never drunk no wine or beer in their life, but they still been slipped with Mickey. Yeah. And he's rocking us to sleep. The Lord is coming. Yeah. The Lord is coming. Jesus is coming. And his reward is with him. To give you according to what you done done. When he comes, don't let him find you slept over a table full of alcohol. Or in the bed with somebody else that ain't your husband. Don't let him come you. finding you mistreating your wife. Uh -oh, Thank you, Jesus. Uh -oh. Thank you, wife, don't let him catch you in a situation where you're mistreating your husband. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Uh -oh. You have a responsibility yes. as a wife. Yes. When that man come home, he should be coming home to a peaceful place. Not a place where you always arguing and fussing and fighting and yeah. it's nasty. Thank you, my Lord. Don't touch like you said. And it's nasty. Somebody needs to clean up. Thank you, Lord. If you ain't the cleaner, you got some kids, train them. Thank you, Lord. If she ain't the cleaner, you do it. Somebody needs to clean up. Amen. Why would you want your spouse to come home every day and nobody clean it up? My Lord. And we're just going to pile it all up. And we'll see what happens. That's not, that's not good. Thank you, Lord. That's not good. We can do better. Amen. And it's only a little bit at a time. My Lord. You brought it in here a little bit at a time. A few bags at a time. Uh -huh. Just start cleaning up a little bit at a time. <laughs> see what you get. Give <laughs> yourself a few months. <laughs> get that stuff out of your house. Not only your natural house, but your spiritual house. Come on down. Oh, yes. Come on down. Come on down. Come on down. We don't pile up anxiety. We have piled up unforgiveness and hatred and wanting to see your brother or sister suffer. That's not God's way. That's not God's way. My admonishment for us today is let's just get reading. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Let's just get our souls back to the place that God intended for it to be. And I'm going to give you a few tools. I'm going to give you a few tools. I'm so glad this day is almost over. <laughs> I don't know what to do. I couldn't sleep last night. I just couldn't sleep. All right. But if serving the Lord seems undesirable to you, then choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve. Whether the gods of your forefathers served beyond the river or the gods of the Amorites, in whose land you are living. But as for me, in my household, we will serve the Lord. Choose. This is a this is a tool. Choose. He already chose you. He already brought you out of darkness. He already introduced you to a marvelous life. Now you got to choose whether to continue this journey with the Lord. And it's going to pay great dividend. Yeah. The choice is yours. We can't tell you as a church what you can and cannot do. You are an individual. And you can make your own choices. But I really, really beg you to choose Christ. Yes. Choose to live this life. Because the, uh, the alternative is you, you're no match for it. Mm -hmm. Eternity lost, you're no match for it. Love. Thank you, Lord. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. Thank you, Lord. You do it. Yes. Don't worry about, don't take the posse. You do it. Thank you, 
Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your might. Paul says, he said, then Paul, Acts chapter 27, verse 31. Then Paul said to the centurion and the soldiers, unless these men stay with the ship, you cannot be saved. Unless you stay in the ark of safety, you cannot be saved. Don't let corona take you out. Don't let fear take you out. Find some place of worship. And if you don't know how to do it, you don't know what to do, ask God. Yes. Ask him to show you where you can be, where you can be saved. That's the goal. We have come this far by faith. Leaning on the Lord. I would sing that, but yeah. We've come this far by
in the name of Jesus, and God is here to fill you with the Holy Ghost. You may be able to sound my voice you never heard. If there ever been any Holy Ghost, I'm here to let you know that the Holy Ghost is real. Today is your day if you're here. Under the sound of my voice, if you're out there on social media, this is your time. I just want you to know that God will save you. We thank God for his presence. Hallelujah. I surrender all to thee. All I have.
you, thank you. We ask you as we go into the four bits of this day to let us have our souls anchored in you. All of those that weren't able to make it, those that are dealing with sickness, we pray for the Kyrie family. We pray for uh, the Pinners. We pray for Mom Crane and Pop Crane. We pray for those who are haven't been able to come out, God. We pray for every member of this church that wasn't able to make it today. We thank you for those who have decided to visit us today. We thank God for you. We ask you to bless them in abundance. Keep them, God, in the midst of whatever we're going through, Lord. Thank you. And we'll be careful to give your name the praise, Lord. God. Everyone say it in Jesus' name.